We all fixate on performance, right? You'll find the posts everywhere proposing solutions to optimize your code, what to do, what not to do. Some even tell you to just use a performant language. But here's the thing, you can't rely solely on the code you see in your editor. You need to observe your code in action if you really want to track down those bottlenecks. So for this you would use telemetry. Now if you're not familiarized with telemetry, in short the fundamental building blocks are traces and spans. So a trace, as you see here, is basically a record of a request's journey through all of your system, so from start to finish. And then you have spans, and the spans are simply single operations within that trace, which represents a unit of work. So let me show you an example. Let's say we have a feature of sending group invite, and well, one of them is accepting a group invite. Now accepting a group invite in itself would be the trace. It would encompass everything. But when the user clicks on the button, there are a lot of different functions that you will internally call. So for example, for this demonstration, the first one could be checking if there is a pending invite for the email, because we want to allow someone accepting a group invite if the invite exists. If it doesn't, then either the client is outdated or the user is spoofing our API. So for that, we check if there is a pending invite. This could take 2.4 milliseconds. So this is the first span for this trace. Then we have another span, which is checking if the user is already a member of the group. So if they are already a member, we bail out right away. If not, we could then move over to adding the member to the group and then removing the pending invite. And this could take 5.6 milliseconds. So as you can see, this would be the span that takes the longest. Now you might be wondering how come these two are in the same span, because these two are two operations, so two units of work. And the reason is because this is a transaction. We want to ensure that our data remains in a consistent state. So if we add a member to the group, we need to ensure that we remove the pending invite. If there was an error, removing the pending invite, then we can roll back this action. So for that, this one takes the longest because it could have three or four operations in total within that transaction. So as you can see, again, we have the trace, we have a lot of children spans, and then we have a parent span. So this one would be the parent one, which again would encompass everything. And then we have the time. So as you can see, this is an easy way for you to identify bottlenecks and to observe everything. So you have great observability. You can then see, are the networks the one that take the longest? Are our data transformations the longest, etc. So in short, all of this is traceability. You want to have traceability in your applications. So now, how can you implement this in your code? Well, for that, I created a Docker Compose. Now this one has a database, this has Redis for the cache, but the three important ones are Prometheus, Grafana, and Tempo. So in short, Tempo receives the traces, Prometheus collects the metrics, and then you have Grafana, which is the dashboard so you can visualize the traces. Now you can find this repository in the description, so make sure to check it out. Now aside from having this Docker Compose, I created two files, the prometheus.yaml file, or you can specify some extra configuration, such as the scrape interval, and then you have the tempo yaml file, so you can specify the port, and the storage and whatnot. Now all of this is for development purposes. In production, you could containerize this and host it on your own, or well, there are services out there that do all of the heavy lifting for you. So that depends on your requirements. Now, this is everything. You should be able to just do a Docker Compose sub dash D and you're good to go. Now, what about the dependencies? Well, for the dependencies, I have add effect open telemetry, so I'll be using effect for this, which simplifies things a lot. It has telemetry out of the box and a plethora of other features, such as retries, a more intuitive concurrency model, a great ecosystem, including a schema for runtime validations, 
and overall a great developer experience. So make sure to check this library out. And then all you need are these libraries. You need these six so that you can hook everything up. And that's it. Now, what about the implementation itself? Well, for that, again, you can find the repository in the description. But in short, all you need to do is create a live layer for this, which effect will use internally. And then you can pass in some data. So for example, the resource, so you can pass in the service name, the service version, attributes. This is pretty much metadata for you. So you can identify your different micro services. So in this case, I just did invite system demo, then you have the span processor. So you have the batch spam processor, and then you pass in the OTLP trace exporter. So here you pass in the endpoint of where you're running your tempo instance container. And then you have the metric reader. And in this one, again, you pass in the port of your Prometheus container. And then you pass in some other information. You can look this up in the documentation on the official docs of OpenTelemetry. And then you create the runtime, which is something that I would recommend anyway, where you can inject all of your dependencies. So in my case, I have the group invites repository, and then I have the group invite service. And well, you would have 34. 40, 50 dependencies here, and then you inject the Node SDK Live, which again, effect will use internally, so it knows where to send the traces. And that's it. That's everything you need to do. Now, what about the code? Well, let's come here over to the group invite service. Here we have the function accept group invite. We take in the input, which is just the group ID, and then here we retrieve the session. So we get it from the context as an external dependency that we can inject. And this is so we do not need to pass it down for every single function call. We can just access it. And then here we log. So we say accepting group invite. And then I passed in this extra information. Now, this is something very interesting because with effect, when you log things, they will automatically be appended over to the trace. So it will reside in the event of the trace. So everything is hooked up automatically for you. So then after logging this, we call has pending invite for email. We do the logic here. If not, we fail with this. Then we check if the member already exists. And if they do send a bad request, so pretty rudimentary. And then here we have the final piece of our logic. We say add a member to group and remove pending invite and then we pass in the data and then we just log group invite accepted for user and then we pass in the email and then we have some error handling here so if we get a database transaction error we can fail with internal server error if we get a no such element exception then we know that the pending invite doesn't exist even though we just check that well it could still happen because well it's now in a separate transaction and after doing all of this so all of this is constructing the computation. As you can see, everything resides within this generator function. All you need to do is say effect dot with span and then you pass in whatever name you want. This is just for you to easily identify the span. So you say group invites.service accept group invite. And then you can pass in some extra options. So you can pass in the kind, if it's internal, server, client, you can pass in the parent span. You have the context, links, whatever. In our case, we just pass in attributes, which is just extra metadata. So in this case, we can tag this and say group ID will be the input.group ID. And that's it. Now, what about the child relation with this parent span? Because this is the one that initiates the whole trace. Well, for that, let's come here to a single function. So has pending invite for email. We do all of the computation here. So this is the unit of work. So we call our database and we do some queries. And then here we say effect dot with span. So notice how we do not have to explicitly specify which is the parent span. Effect will manage that automatically for you. So in this case, we pass in this other name so that we can easily identify it. And again, we can pass in 
extra attributes. Now we could log here, we can log errors, we can log info, whatever you want, and that will be automatically associated with this span. So you will get those events, which we'll see in a moment. And then we have these other two functions. Again, we do the same thing, we do the query, and then we say with span. And finally, for this whole transaction, we say with span, and we pass in more attributes. And that's pretty much it nothing too crazy. Now, who calls all of these? Who is the one that initiates this? Well, if I come here, we have the actual procedure. So I'm using TRPC here. We define the input. So we pass in the schema, which is a SOT schema. And then we get the input. So just group ID. And then we get the context. And the context has the headers, the original request. And well, we have the session here. So all I need to do here is say, well, flat map, because we we need to get access to the service and then we call accept group invite. So we want to flatten this effect. That's why we say flat map. And then we need to provide the services, our dependencies. So the great thing about using a managed runtime is that it will automatically pass in all of the layers for you. So as you can see here, we're merging all of these layers. That means that we do not need to come here and say effect that provide service and then pass in every single layer one by one. They are readily available. But we need to pass in the session because logically the session can't be defined here in the runtime. We need to define that explicitly for every single call. So we say fact that provides service, we pass in the session context, which as we can see, a very complex layer. We just have the session here, so this type. And then we pass in the context that session. And now everything within this function will get access to this context successfully. And that's it. Now you could have an span here. So you could say effect dot with span here. And you can say the resolver except group invite. But in my case, I believe it suffices in the service. So now let's see this in action. Let's come here over to my application. So I'm going to create a group. So some group, I created this group, then I can say invite members. And then I can pass in an email and I invite this user. And then if I switch accounts, so I sign in with my other test user, we're going to get the invite here. And when we log in, we have you have pending group invites. And then if I accept this, this triggered the whole race. So this was sent over. So now if I visit over localhost 3000, we get our Grafana instance. Now it is going to prompt you to log in. And to log in, all you need to do is type in admin as the username and admin as the password. So keep that in mind. And once you're in here, you can come here to the sidebar and then you can come here over to explore and then click here on search and it is going to give you all of your traces. So the history of your traces. In my case, I have only initiated it once. So I only have a single trace. And as we can see, it took a total of 23 milliseconds. And this is in development, of course, with my database running within my same network. And if I click here on the trace, we get all of the information. Now to view this bigger, you can add this to the dashboard. And then if I open this, I believe we can come here and click on view. So as we can see, we have the invite system demo. Again, if you have a distributed system, you can easily identify the different systems that you have and all of your microservices and whatnot. In our case, we get invite system demo and then we get the trace for group invite service dot accept group invite. So this is the parent span of everything and that is the one that initiated the whole trace. So if I come here, as you can see, we have the group invite service accept group invite. So this is the parent one, and hence we get that here. Now notice how we have the other spans. 
So this one is the parent and then this one called the has pending invite for email. So as we can see, this one right here took 12.06 milliseconds and we get the span attributes here. So we can see the invit email and the group ID. And then once this was done, as you can see right after it called his user already member of group. So if I come here, we get these other span attributes, we get some other information here. And finally, we get the whole transaction. So funnily enough, the transaction took less than this one right here. But well, there are many factors that come into play. And this is not entirely a benchmark. This is just a way for you to have traceability in your application. And finally, we have the transaction again, span attributes, and we get the invit email, the user ID to add and the group ID and we can copy this if we want. So this is great. As you can see, we have full observability of the single event. Of course, you could have hundreds of traces and you could have hundreds of spans within a single trace. So you can easily pinpoint what your bottlenecks are. And if something went wrong, you can add some extra metadata in your logs and you will get those events here. So as we can see, since this is the only one that logged something, we get access to our events, which if we recall are this one. So we have the effect log info. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, so once everything succeeded, we get the group invite accepted for user. So those are two events. And as we can see, the first one, which is accepting group invite triggered at just 2.07 milliseconds of the whole process initiating. And then as we can see, we have the log level. So this is info. And then we have the other one. So right at the end, at 23.5 milliseconds, we get group invite accepted for user. And then we get the email here. So as we can see, this is very powerful and also very easy. With effect, all you need to do is say with span and you're good to go. Everything will be massive managed for you. Now you could even say that this is just one line. What tracing you only need one line and now you can hook it up with whatever you want and you can visualize your traces. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.